One. Bennett Davis in here. We're going to be talking with Jeb Ivey. We are West Valley Vikings from back in the day. I was back there in 95, 96. Um, Saratoga was a great little school, so it was funny. I looked down your LinkedIn profile and saw that we went to the same school, so I had to reach out to you, of course. Um, today we're going to be talking about you playing for uh, Kataya in Finland. Let's go into details. What was it like when you got there? What was the city like? Um, what would a player expect when they get off the plane and uh, get ready for the basketball season? All right. When I went there, it was uh, the season had already started. Uh, they were about five games in. They actually were coming off a season where they went to the finals, were expecting to win. Um, this is a club with a lot of tradition, a lot of high expectations for winning. Um, most of the high level national team Finnish players go and play there. So um, it's a unique situation for our import coming there. Um, most of the time, specifically in Northern Europe, um, as an import, you go to a team and you're expected to produce. You're expected to be one of the main guys, whether you're just the only American or import or there's three to five on the team. And this being um, uh, a very uh, high level club in Finland, um, as an import, you go to Kataya a lot of times to be to fill roles for the Finns, which is very unique. Um, so like I said, uh, they were five games in already. Uh, they came off a disappointing loss in the finals the previous year, and they were off to a really bad start. Um, they changed Americans already, American point guards already three times in just one month before I got there. And I was coming off a season in Germany where Individually, I had good numbers, but uh, team-wise, we were not good. And so it was, as you know, it's tough to get a job uh, when uh, your team doesn't do well or maybe your numbers don't add up. So um, we had just, uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, so we were looking for a job uh, to really just uh, pay the bills uh, and hopefully propel uh, myself to the next step. Now, was this, um, this is what season is this of yours? Professional. This, season? uh, this was my seventh season, going into my seventh season. So and what was um, city like Kataya, what was it like? And so yeah. you went over there. Did you have the baby in the United States, or do you have a, your baby over in Finland? So she, my wife was pregnant. I left, and I, I, you, when you go to Finland, you land in Helsinki. That's the international airport. But, but Joensu is the town, and it's a town. It's a college town, and it's nowhere near the metro area. It's up northeast Finland. It might as well be Russia. Okay. Um, and so once you land in Helsinki, uh, you either have to take another flight uh, to Joensu, or in my situation, when I landed, one of the managers came and picked me up, and we took a six-hour drive. Wow. And um, I had a game the next night. Um, but uh, so six hour drive, Northeast Finland, like I said, Russia, you get to the town, it's a college town, doesn't feel like a college town at all. It's dark, the lighting is dim. I don't know if you've ever been to Eastern Europe. I, I know you have, but for anybody else listening, you know, it's the quality of, of, of architecture and, and the landscape is just most likely not something you're used to. And so um, it was a big adjustment uh, period. Um, and, um, and yeah, really, really unique going there. Yeah, um, fresh off the plane. I did a couple interviews, uh, you know, four hours of uh, kind of like a hazy, almost like if there was a red sky all the time and you're not really seeing the sun. What was the city like? So what, what, how many, you said it was a small town, 30, 40,000 people. Um, so it was a college town. So the majority of the town was college students, but you really didn't see them until it was maybe Saturday night and people were going out and partying. Um, it was really dark. Uh, uh, dim lit, um, as you know, um, the sun doesn't come out very much in the fall and winter uh, in Finland, yeah. um, similar to the rest of Northern Europe. And so um, it, it, it's, it's very depressing, just to be honest, it's really depressing. Uh, you got to have a lot of accountability to be able to stay on a schedule to where you're getting up, eating, going to practice, getting your naps, uh, getting back to evening practice and getting to bed in a good time yeah. so that you can get up and get the most out of your body for the next days. It takes a lot of that. And a lot of the players that I see you know, just in general have a hard time with that. And you see their careers are short. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for you, you were over 10 years. You, you know what it's about. 
but not everybody does. Everybody thinks it's this wonderful, um, easy uh, dream occupation. Just show it, up it, the games and play. My brother came out and watched. He's like, dude, you bust your ass. I was like, what do you think? I just show up the games and stuff? like, yeah, if you're not sore, yeah. you're not doing something right. Yeah. So let's go into yeah. what were the facilities like there? Um, did they provide you shoes? Did they provide you kind of like if you go to Milan, we are sponsored by Armani Jeans and we get suits made and get 30% off all Armani Jeans. What was that like if the facilities, maybe the travel while you're in the season, what, what could a player expect? Yeah, so at the time, 2008, 2009, around that time, you know, the world was hitting, it was America and then trickled down to the rest of the world was, was really in a financial crisis. And so this team coming off of high expectations and then a huge disappointment by losing was really trying to um, save money. And um, as far as facilities goes, we had a practice gym. Uh, we had a big dome arena for our games, um, but it was very unique. It was a huge, huge arena, but uh, the court was made in one section of it. And then you had a turf field and you had a track and you had weights in this huge arena. And it was, um, uh, I don't know what to compare it to. Maybe something like um, back in the day, remember the Alamo Dome, uh, yeah. the Alamo Dome with the Spurs, how they kind of blocked off a section. It was something like that. Okay. Um, so we had really nice facilities at the same time, because I mentioned we were the, the management was really trying to save some money. Um, we really didn't have practice jerseys. Um, we got shoes, um, but it, but I've been in places where you're able to really get shoes that fit you, fit your style, fit your game. Yeah, yeah. You know, this was this was not like that. It was just like it's either these or you paying your own. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of reimbursement for equipment that you need. And, you know, I need this. I take it to the club. They're going to reimburse you because they want, you know, you to have the, you get the most out of you. So it was really, really a tough year. It was a struggle um, for, for all the whole season, yeah. It was a huge struggle. And at the same time, we were battling. We were, there was this uphill battle from a, uh, the previous season. I got there. We were one in six. Four more games go by. We realized we got information that one of our younger players wasn't registered properly. So, boom, those first 10 games all losses. So from that moment, it was all uphill. Um, I'm coming in as an import and me and my game, I'm a leader. I'm, I'm a team guy. I, I like big moments. Um, so I'm also playing with Finnish players that love that too. And that that's their role. So there was yeah. this constant conflict and, uh, and, and dynamic of us trying to figure out what works best. And, you know, to be honest, at the end of the day, we, we battled back and I, it was a great experience. I learned a ton from it. I enjoyed my coach a ton. Um, Pekka Salminen, a great coach. We got into the playoffs, uh, took, took the number two seed to, to five games to the brink, you know, didn't, didn't uh, come through. It was a huge disappointment for, for the management again, but, um, but really overall, I took a ton of things from it. I learned a ton, but really added to the chip on my shoulder to, um, go back to Finland, take a step forward and dominate them, yep. dominate all the doubt that came with them, the, the, the club and, and, um, use that as motivation. Yeah. And that's what a lot of basketball is. Even if it's in the middle of the season, some player, you didn't play good like that next round. You're like, all right, I got I only came out and had 12 points. Let's come out and do a little bit better. Um, what advice would you give a, a younger player or even, you know, like you said, you went over there with your wife, what, what information would you give a player, maybe uh, the spouse, uh, the family members of someone who was about to sign with this team in, um, in Finland? For a younger player, I think it's a great opportunity. This, this club, Kataya, has all, not always, but almost every year they're in some sort of European competition, whether it's the Champions League, uh, Euro Cup a couple of years ago. Um, they, you know, they, they want to play high level in Europe. They want to be involved with those other big countries. So for a younger player, this is a great opportunity to propel your career, a good stepping stone. Finland is a great stepping stone just in general. Yep. This club is going to allow you to get, get your name out there a bit more outside of Finland. Um, so along with that though, however, it's a unique situation because you're playing with Finns. Sounds like you're, you're isolated. isolated. You're isolated. You're six hours from the metro area. You know, you're, you're closer to St. Petersburg, Russia than you are Helsinki. Um, so, so 
that's a tough dynamic to deal with on a day to day basis. Um, money wise, you're not going to get a ton of money. You're going to, you're going to, as an import, it's kind of strange, but you're going to be on the lower end of those finished players are most likely going to be probably paid better than you. That's a tougher dynamic too, depending on what you're used to. Um, so for a younger player, there's a lot of, you know, benefits, but then at the same time, a lot of responsibility that you might not be used to yet. If you're, if you're with a family, like I was that's Oh man, that's tougher. You know, there's, uh, it's, it's, if you, if you have children that need schooling or, or, you know, you have a you wife that's sometimes like you've got you, a three, four, five year old, you need some daycare and things of that nature. Yeah. That's the, the resources might be not there. Um, at the same time, your family's there, your wife's there, a lot of downtime, but everybody speaks mm -hmm. English. So, you know, it, if everybody does speak English, uh, the, the younger generation, the older generation is a, is very, very aloof. You know, you're walking down the street, heads down, no smiles, pale faces. Okay. Um, you know, Finnish people are very, very strong and tough people. They have a very, they, they take pride in their history. Um, once you kind of break that outside seal, you, you see how wonderful they are. But like I said, the older generation versus the younger generation is very different. Um, but going to this club, if you have a family going to this club, you might not have the best experience. Just to be, just to be honest, I would say if you're going to go to Finland and you have children and you have a wife, um, a girlfriend, get to the metro area an hour outside of it. There's a lot of teams in that in that realm, so there are tons of opportunities there. But the further you go outside of the metro area or further from the other big cities, I think the tougher experience you're going to have. So you brought up uh, finances about um, you know with the, not probably not the biggest paycheck but at the same time it sounds like finland's a great stepping stone to maybe get to a division two italy division two france something of that nature use it as um you have the france and the spains and the italy's and the greece and turkey's and israel's that are probably the division one level one and then you have these stepping stones what were the finances like there um and, and after that we'll just wrap up the interview um finances um uh, you know i made i had probably one of the best contracts, not that year, but while in Finland and after proving myself a couple of years, I signed one of the best contracts in my whole career. So there's some huge opportunity financially in Finland. On top of that, um, with a family, as we were there for a few years, we realized um, how much the, uh, the, the government is involved and helps. For example, uh, when, you have a, when you have a baby, in Finland, or you have a child in Finland, the government sends you a baby box, which is full of resources for having a baby, diapers, food, uh, uh, money, um, you know, so they, they really have a great system. I mean, we loved it when, as we got closer to the metro area in Finland, it was convenient. It was great. We were safe. We were secure. We had anything we needed, medical, dental for us, our children. Yep. It was great. Um, um, so, uh, but that year we, we didn't know, we were not experienced enough. We, we didn't have like enough the, info. The economy downfall and it seemed like it was a, 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 a unique situation. The economy yeah. was taking the kind of a dump and everything. So, um, obviously it's a, probably 10 years, 10, 12 years later. Um, have you heard any other past stories? Like, did you get all your money and all that type of stuff? That's really what this Euro Hoop Life is about. It's an Angie's list. So we want to find out all the details because, as we, as you know, we are traveling basketball salesmen. And our ability to put a ball in a hole is how we get paid. So people want you know, to do these things. You the, know, the biggest thing, the biggest problem, really one of the only problems I had getting my money over the years, and specifically in Finland, was the conversion rate. Now, a lot of people, a lot of players will sign a contract and they'll have their number that they're getting for the year, or maybe it says per month and it says U.S. dollars. Now, it's up to a player to sort of counter off for that. Do you want to stick with whatever you're making in dollars or do you want it to be in euros? And um, so that's kind of up to the player. Now, if the, the tricky thing is, is if you, depending on the rate, if you decide your contract, it wants to be in dollars, then each month it's going to be a different amount because of the conversion rate the euro is is always fluctuating the dollar is always fluctuating so one month you might get you might actually get more than what's in your contract other months you might get less so that time i was there with the financial crisis going on there was always money missing 
Yeah. And and every month it was always this freaking phone call I had to make and this this issue and it just became so old and um it just became one of those things where it's like where's the accountability where's the communication let's just let's just and so really we learned a ton from it um to be able to to we enjoyed putting our contracts all in euros after that year yeah um the euro was so strong it dropped a little bit but but that was a big thing we learned that year big thing yeah. outstanding so Thank you for all the information. How would players get in contact with you if they were to have a contract offered to them um, by Catania? Uh, they can look me up on Facebook. Uh, just type in my name, Jeb Ivy, LinkedIn as well. I'm, I'm on social media. I'm kind of old school. I'm not all up to date with like, as everybody is. Um, or they can uh, email me um, at ivyball33 at gmail.com. I have no problem uh, giving that out. Outstanding. Jeb, thank you for your time and your information. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yep.